So here we are, guys. So welcome, everyone. Um, this is our first Facebook Live that we are doing in this group. And so just want to kind of tell you a little bit uh, about myself. Hi, my name is Jason Carver, and I live here in Waco, Texas. And uh, we started this group called Standing Supernaturally for Marriage Restoration. And so I, my backstory, hopefully you've gone on the, the side and you saw my little four-minute uh, clip that I did when I was in a, a speaking competition um, and kind of tells you my story of marriage restoration. And I'm a pastor here in Waco, Texas. Uh, we launched Jason Carver Ministries uh, last year. Um, I teach tennis at Baylor University. I'm a tennis teacher. So if you need to take tennis, tennis classes, I'm your guy. I did that for a while of just switching over and doing tennis uh, for years, I've done that. I was a tennis teaching professional, tried to travel all over the world uh, teaching tennis, and then get, went into the ministry for the last 15, almost 20 years, and been a pastor. And you know my story if you watch the video. If you haven't, I encourage you to do that. It's in the announcement section, uh, just about the marriage restoration that occurred in my life. And so from that, um, even, you know, we really felt the Lord saying that God is, He gave me some tools, gave me some, some understanding, and my history is. It's teaching, and my history is preaching and, and training and creating courses. I travel all over the world uh, proclaiming the good news of Jesus. I teach all kinds of different classes, and we do all kinds of things of, of releasing the goodness and hope of God. And so we're launching, you guys, this is the first week that we're doing this, that we're launching our Standing Supernatural uh, class. If you went to the website, in a few weeks, I'm going to be doing a Facebook challenge. There's going to be a seven-day challenge of really taking a little bit of tonight's teaching, but a whole lot more, seven days, of how do you stand for your marriage. And so if you're in this group, a couple things that we're just assuming is that one, you're standing for the reconciliation of your spouse. Either you're separated, it might be looking like it's going that direction, or maybe you're already divorced. But you believe God is telling you that He is going to restore your marriage. And I'm going to tell you right now, I absolutely believe that. I believe I have the word of the Lord that there is restoration, miracle restoration power that's going to be coming. That is my life. That is my testimony. I believe that's what I carry. And I also believe that as we're standing, you and I can stand with absolute hope and absolute joy, even when we don't see any evidence of the uh, marriage being turned around or the stand coming to an end. I lived that for a year and a half. And I can say that as I lived and walked through that, I was able to carry hope. I was able to carry joy because the Lord, I believe, gave me a blueprint, a framework of how I can lean to him, trust him, take the scriptures at its word and really go after it. And so what I want to do tonight is just kind of launch uh, a video session that we're going to be doing here in the group. And that's simply of how, what it looks like to allow the Lord to fight for you. If you saw my Facebook post, I put this picture up on the other screen today and it said, the Lord is on my side. And so I want you to know, God is absolutely on your side. He believes in the restoration of marriages. He is fighting for it. He is doing it. So I want you guys to know that God is on your side. That as you're standing for your marriage, God is moving heaven and earth, and He is fighting for you. He is doing so much things to you and for you and for your spouse. So the Lord is on your side, and I hope that gives you absolute incredible hope to know that tonight. But what I want to do tonight is I want to launch a little teaching series on how do we fight for the breakthrough? What is it that we are called to do? What is it that God is leading us to do? How do we absolutely fight for the breakthrough that we know God wants for us? And so here's what we're going to do is we're going to get into this study tonight. And this study is, here's a good way that we can probably call it. It's this right here. It is this three ways that we advance in the kingdom. So tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about three specific ways that you and I can actually advance our movement advance when we are in the kingdom. How do we do that? How do we move forward with that? What are the things that he has called us to do? Because is there a way that we can partner with God and partner with heaven and say, hey, I believe God is going to move on behalf. I believe God is going to win this battle and fight this battle. But the question is, what do we do? What is our role? What is your role? And so how it works is very simple. We're going to kind of go over one part tonight. 
Uh, I'll finish the next part in the next couple days, and then we'll do the second part a couple days after that. So tonight, I don't want to make it short. I don't want us to have this real long video, but I have a lot of scriptures that I do want to share with you, and I do want you to move forward with, and I want you to understand this incredible reality. There's three major ways that we fight, that we walk and advance, and the ways that we do that is simple. We sit, we walk, and we stand. How do we win this battle? You guys are believing and praying for the restoration of your spouse. What is it that God is calling you to do? I believe these three things are pivotal. There's times that we sit. There's times that we simply walk. We keep walking. And there's times that we stand. We must learn which way to live and to work as we are trying to fight for this restoration. And so that is what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to get into the scriptures here tonight, and we're going to talk about first tonight, the main thing I want you to understand is how do you sit? How in the world do we sit, and why are we even supposed to sit in the sit, walk, stand movement of letting the Lord fight for you? Three things are going to happen tonight. Three things will happen in your life when we learn to sit. First off, we're going to learn our identity. When you learn to sit, you learn the identity of who you are. Second, we say take the position of a child, which is we're learning who our father is. And then we also begin to learn the absolute power of rest. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That is where we're going to go. We're going to get into the scriptures. I'm going to show you some verses here, and they're going to be on the screen for you to look at. So I encourage you to write them down. But I want to do a training tonight of what does the Bible say of how we can advance forward. How do we put on the spiritual armor? And I'm going to tell you a story of my life of what God was leading me to do. And so we're going to jump right in here of this first one of sit. How in the world do we just simply sit when we know God is moving, know God is walking? I want to encourage you with this truth right here. Look at this verse on the screen, okay? This verse simply says this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil that are in the heavenly places. I want you to know this reality. The battle over your marriage, it's fought in the heavenly realm. What's happening with your spouse, why they are leaving, why they left, the drama that you guys have been facing, I want you to know it is a spiritual battle. So we're going to train you to learn how do we continue to love our spouse, but yet absolutely try to kick the devil in the cookies and say, look, no more. And we don't blame our spouse for what they're doing. We don't blame them. We don't lash out to them. But what we do is we don't fight them. We fight what's happening. We fight the enemy. We fight the situation that is going on over in the heavenly realms because that's what the scripture says. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So my friends who are guys, my guys who are in this group, no, you are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Your battle is not with your spouse. Your battle is not with their family members. It's not with their friends. It's not with their lawyers. The battle right now is in the heavenly realm. And so if we can learn that the battle is in the heavenly realm, that puts everything in perspective. That allows us to see that our battle is going to be fought and won in the heavenly realm. And we've got great news. Who is living in the heavenly realm? God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus. They are going after victory inside the heavenly realm. And so as we're talking about the, what I would say, the three ways that we learn, three ways we have breakthrough, it comes from this passage right here. It comes right here for this passage that says here, this is Ephesians chapter 2. This is verses 4 through 6 that I want to read you. This is where we're going to camp out. This is where we're going to stay. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, and by grace you have been saved. And he has raised us up, and right here, and he seated us in the heavenly realm with Christ Jesus. I want you to know that you are seated in the heavenly realm right now. So you're like, Jason, what in the world does it have to do with my stand? My spouse has left. How do, what, how do I win this war? How do I get them back? I'm here to tell you it happens when we understand our rightful place is simply seated next to our Father. We're seated next to Christ. Because when we understand that we're simply seated 
It changes our position of what we feel we have to strive for, what we have to do. It starts with an understanding. It starts with a mindset of saying, God, you have this battle. You have this one. Let me give you an example of what I did when I was in my stand, when I was walking and waiting for God to bring the restoration of my life, of how I simply sat and I sit. So what I simply did was this. I just I chose to simply say, Father, I'm seated in heavenly realms. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit in your presence. And I'm going to imagine that you're actually fighting for me. You are moving on my behalf. And then I begin to see how the Lord is fighting for me. He's fighting with me. He's fighting in front of me. He's fighting behind me. That is what God does. And so what I want you guys to know tonight is that we're going to look through the scriptures as this. The entirety of the Christian life, it's this reality. We came into it because what was purchased for us. Because Christ bought it. He purchased us. He won you. He won me. He did all the heavy lifting. He did all the fighting. And so when we come to standing for our marriage, we need to understand God will do this. He will fight for you. He will fight for me. I want you to look at this verse right here. This is a key component of this verse. And that's this. Mark chapter 10 verse 15. As we're getting into understanding why do we sit? How do we sit? The purpose of sitting, you're like, Jason, I need to do things. You don't understand. I want you to understand this passage, Mark chapter 10, 15. Jesus said, truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter in. We have to understand that God is wanting us to first be his child. He is wanting to first be our father. He is wanting to show himself strong to his children. He's wanting to fight for you. He's wanting us to walk in the position of a simple child. Not immaturity, but childlike that we absolutely trust our father. We trust him. We trust that he's moving. We trust that he's going, daddy's going to bat for us. Daddy's going to do all that he's called us to do because the Lord is on our side. He's on your side. So let the father move on your behalf. How do we do that first? Is we sit. We learn to take a sitting place and a resting place just like a child does. We sit at the feet of our Father and we allow the anxiety of the moment just to decrease and we allow Papa to come in and do what he needs to do. If a child is, is, is I have a daughter, I have two daughters and they're 13 and 11, but if somebody barged into my house, if there was an issue, I promise you they would run behind me. They would come behind the Father. Why? Because it's the Father's job to protect. It's the Father's job to fight. It's the Father's job to bring restoration. That's what He does. And so as I know you're fighting for your marriage, you're doing everything you know to do, I want you to start with this understanding. That's why we're doing this tonight. I want to talk about sitting in the presence of God. Because when we sit, there's some things that take place. One, we understand our identity. What's our identity? is that we're children of God and that we have a Father who's fighting for us. We also understand that God is absolutely in control. And we also understand that we don't have to strive. We don't have to do that. There are different seasons of our stand. I went through different seasons of what to do. You will go through different seasons of standing for your marriage. There'll be times that you do what we're learning tonight. You just sit. And you let God be God. And I'm going to give you some verses to encourage you with that. There are times that you are moving forward. You are advancing. You are walking. You are taking ground. We're going to go over that next time. There are things you need to do. It's what I call the warring season. When we're dancing around and we're walking around our house and we're praying and we're declaring and we're fasting and we're doing everything that we know to do to, to bring the angelic activity into the moment, into our spouse. I know that is important. I'm going to teach you what to do on that. But I want you to know there are different times and different seasons. Sometimes God just simply wants you to sit. He wants you to understand that He is your Father. He doesn't need you to fight this battle. He's got it completely on His own. So often that's what the Lord wants us to know. I've got this. Jason, I've got this. That's what the Lord told me. He says, Jason, I have this. Let me train you of how to walk with me. 
And that's what I love to do in these groups, what we're going to do with you. Train you to understand God is in control. He has this. You don't have to be full of anxiety. You don't have to be stressed when the uh, divorce papers show up and when the court date is set and when the judge hands, you know, nails down his gavel saying it's over. I want you to know God has this. You can sit and you can be still with the presence of the Lord. And so what I want to do here is I want to give you some verses that you probably know, but I want to encourage you in these verses. I want you to know that what the scripture says here in Exodus 14. You're saying, Jason, I don't know if I can just sit. Jason, I've, I've, I've got to do some things. I've got to call them. I've got to call her. I've got to tell her how much this and tell her this and, and give her a piece of my mind. And, and maybe God will change her and maybe she, he or she will repent and maybe they'll come home and I need to call this person, do this person. You know what? God will show you when to do that. But I think it's amazing for us to start at this one because so often, if you're like me, you're a fixer, you're a doer. You wanted to get your hands on it. When my wife left and my world crashed, I did everything I knew to do to bring her home. I made every phone call I could make. I said every prayer that I could pray. I read every scripture that I could read. I sang every song that I could sing. I marched around in every way that I could. I anointed everything that I could do. I did everything that I thought in the natural or even in the spiritual for me to do to bring my wife home. I was doing it all. But the Lord told me, Jason... Will you let me fight for you? Let me do this. Because what he said to me is, Jason, I want you to learn this valuable lesson. That I'm your father. You are my child. I will fight for you. And that's what this verse in Exodus 14, 14 says. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be silent. It's the sitting seasons that we learn that God is fighting for us. We also see in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, it says, And he said, Listen, all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and king of Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. I tell you, friends, don't be afraid. Do not be dismayed at the great horde, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. I understand what it's like to have like a great horde coming at you. But Jesus is so clear. God wrote in the scriptures, don't be afraid. The battle is not yours. So I want you to know the battle that you're facing, it is not yours. So this is the season in the sitting season that we learn the understanding reality. The battle's not mine. God has this. And when that happens, peace begins to come. Because the devil will learn to kind of rile us up and get us going and try to overwork us in everything that we know that we can do. Next verse I want you to look at is Psalms chapter 46. This is verses 9 through 11. Psalms 46, 9 through 11. It says this. He makes the war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and the shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts. I want you to know the word host. Most of us understand that word as host as a multitude of people, a large amount of people, but that's not what the word means. If you look it up in the original language, you know, part of my pastoral training is I have a minor in biblical languages. That word host, it means armies. If you look it up in other languages, in the Spanish Bible, it says the Lord of armies. The Lord of armies is with us. God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah is what he says. So he's celebrating that. He is saying to you, God is on your side. He is the Lord of armies. He is fighting for you. He says, be still and know that I'm God. So when we're in the sitting season, that's when we are stilling our heart before the Lord. It's when we're stilling our, our reality that God of angel armies is on my side. He is fighting for me. One last verse I want, I want to share with you. It's Psalms verse 37, verse 7. It says, Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently before Him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in His way, over the man who carries out evil desires. He says it again, Be still and wait. Don't worry about all the prosperity that this other person is living in. 
Maybe your spouse is just living high on the hog. Maybe your spouse is just doing all that they want to do and they're spending all the money they want to spend and you're over here struggling to figure out how you're going to provide for yourself. The scripture says, do not even worry about all the ways that they're living, all the things they're doing, because the Lord is saying, do not fret, but wait for the Lord. It says, wait patiently for him. And so that's what we're going to do. That is the goal, is that we are trying to wait patiently for God. So I want you to know this incredible reality. It's this. There are certain things that can only be won through rest. There are some battles that can only be won when we are resting. There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that I can do. God is setting this up to say, I want you to know this reality. I am fighting for you. But I also want you to learn the position of rest. I want you to know what happens when I fight the battles. I will come. I will give you peace. I will remove all anxieties. But I want you to understand it happens when we rest. So our three ways, sit, walk, stand. How do we fight for this battle? How do we do this? How do we win the battle? How do we, 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 we see the victory in our life? It's one of these three ways. Tonight, I just wanted to share with you the power of sitting, the power of taking a rest, the power of understanding that there's times that I sit, there's times that I walk, there's times that we just stand, and we're going to get into that in the, next couple, in the next couple of teachings. But the lesson I had to learn was the sitting season. That was the most difficult for me. It was when I couldn't do anything else but be still. I just had to let God move. And if you are a hands-on, do-it-yourself, get your hands dirty, you want to get things done, I'm telling you, I understand that is difficult. That is hard. But here's why we're in this moment. It's because we're in that moment that the Lord, He does a couple of things. He teaches us who He is. He teaches us the reality that we're His children. And He teaches us the power of rest. And so as we just kind of wrap up this little simple teaching tonight, just I want you to be honest with yourself. Which one of these three do you struggle with? Do you sit and rest? Okay, well, I celebrate that. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Do you walk? Do you advance? Do you take movement forward? Do you do that okay? And we're going to have a whole teaching on that, what that looks like. And do you stand? Do you like, you know, I'm just not going to budge. A standing season is to look, I'm not making any forward movement. I'm not making any, I'm not losing ground. I'm just going to stand. And there's times that we just stand and we're still. Very similar to the sitting season. So if you're like that, if you're like me, this one's the hard one. And so I want to pray with you for the peace of God to rush your spirit. Because what the enemy wants to do right now is he wants to bring anxiety. He wants to get you panicked. He wants to get you freaking out about the moments and he will work you into exhaustion. He will even use, here's the kill, he will even use godly spiritual disciplines to get you exhausted. As we finish, listen to this story of mine. It was in the first beginning of the month of my stand and I was just doing everything I knew to do. Praying, crying out, declaring, worshiping. I was doing it all. So much so that there was one night that I was just exhausted. And I wanted to just simply turn on ESPN. And I said, I just need to watch some Sports Center just to kind of get my mind off of it. And I sat down and I turned on the Sports Center. And as soon as I turned it on, I heard this voice come to me so loud. Jason, how dare you sit and watch Sports Center when your wife and family are who knows where? Don't you know you should be praying and you should be worshiping and you should be warring for them? I heard that so clearly in my heart, in my head. And I was like, yeah, I guess I should. But then I just got exhausted again. And I felt convicted. I felt bad. Like, I think I'm just supposed to watch some sports center. But this mind, this thought kept rushing to me. It's like, don't you know you're a pastor? You know what to do. Don't you, don't you, you should be doing all of these things. And then I just called a friend of mine and then I called a pastor buddy and said, look, this is what I'm struggling with. Like, how can I just watch Sports Center when my wife and children are, are out there? I, I should be praying for them. 
I should be warring in the spirit for them. And my friend with such wisdom said, no, no, no. This is a resting season. You have to rest. What was happening was the enemy was using good, godly, spiritual disciplines that we're going to talk about that are a part of the process. But he wanted me to work through those and run myself into exhaustion. And he was telling me that bringing them home, getting the restoration, was going to be 100% on me. And God was trying to tell me, Jason, I've got this. Rest. You're my child. And watch me fight for you. So, I bless you guys. Thanks for joining in on this video tonight. We're going to be having several other videos when we do our, our big Facebook live launch um, for our challenge that we're going to be having um, we're going to be working on that and showing you all of those things. And so we're going to be uh, just kind of jumping on the reality of who God is and what he does. And so I encourage you to share anyone that you know. If you're talking to Facebook, anyone going through a stand, uh, bring them, you know, invite them to join our group. Uh, my passion is teaching. My passion is training. My passion is to release testimonies. Uh, I believe in the prophetic word. We're going to be prophesying. We're going to be bringing hope and encouragement into this. I taught a school of ministry uh, to train people how to hear God's voice, how to let the scriptures come to alive. We're going to be doing all of that. And so my passion is to equip you and to train you. Yes, we want you posting in the group. We want you asking questions and people coming in and giving encouraging words. And we want hope and community to be revealed. That is going to be a key component. But a major component is going to be the teaching aspect to it. I want to train you and teach you and give you the tools to watch restoration occur. It happened in my life. It can happen in yours. And so I am so excited for what God is going to do. And I want you guys to see this final picture on the screen, which I said, the Lord is on your side. No matter what is happening, I want you to know God is on your side. Amen. Bless you guys. I'll see you next time.